Welcome everyone, Stealthy Shroni here, and today I'm bringing you my review of Beacon Pines. Hiding Spots Games developed Beacon Pines with Fellow Traveler as the publisher, releasing it in September 2022. For any of my humble choice viewers, you would have received this game in the February 2023 bundle. Beacon Pines is a cute and creepy narrative adventure game. It offers up a unique way to tell the story which gives the illusion of choice despite it being a linear experience. But its great storytelling, and excellent art, made it easy to forgive my misplaced first impressions. Starting off with the graphics and presentation, as I just mentioned, the art here is great. The hand-drawn art looks really good and a lot of care was put into it, especially with the character designs. I appreciated the many different character portraits all with a variety of frames to convey different emotions. The fact that they were all animals added an extra layer of charm and helped bring home that storybook feel the entire game was going for. I will say that after the first few hours, many of the areas did start getting used over and over. However, each one of them was really well done. Also, some more art could have been created to convey some of the storybook narration. The team did the best they could to keep their scope in check though, and I really don't think this detracts from the experience. On a note for the voice acting, while I do wish each of the characters had their own voice, I do understand why this couldn't be the case. But the voice actress they have, acting as the narrator of the story, is excellent. She had a familiar voice that I thought I knew from something else, only to find that she has a rather small resume, at least as told by IMDB. Read about it a hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. She did such a good job with the narration, and it felt Mr. like I was listening to an audiobook at times. Overall, the mystery the story was telling was compelling, and each new thread that unraveled made me want to keep playing. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. The game starts simply with the opening of a book. The player is greeted by the narrator, who says they need the player for a particularly important task, which happens to be finding the ending to this story. The storybook itself follows a young boy, or elk, deer, some sort of animal with antlers. His name is Luca, and his mother recently disappeared and his father passed away a year prior. All he has is his grandmother, who now takes care of him, and his best friend Rolo. Together, Rolo and Luca come across something they weren't supposed to see, and a mystery ensues surrounding the town of Beacon Pines and the secrets it keeps. The story is told in a non-chronological fashion, which is quite interesting, but it might be a little confusing to some. Luckily, the game does a good job to keep things from getting too complicated. The story also does a really good job to not constantly retread old ground despite constantly jumping back and forth along the different timelines. However, there are definitely moments where the player will need to suspend their disbelief for the sake of the story, or at least I needed to do that. I like the characters and the game does try to give several of them extra time to flesh them out. But it does mainly stick with the three child protagonists. There were many characters who had almost no characterization at all, and many that served to act as a background for the town to not make it seem so empty. No spoilers on the ending, but I did think it ended abruptly, which took me by surprise. I think everything was wrapped up nicely for the most part though, with an epilogue helping out some of the loose ends. Story-wise, this was great. It felt like a good book that I couldn't put down, and I always had to play through one more section to see what would happen. The gameplay here is fairly limited. Largely, it consists of the player walking around to get to the next objective and continue the story. There is flavor dialogue here and there from the other minor characters, but nothing substantial such as some sort of actual investigation gameplay, puzzles, or anything else. There are these charms you can collect, with many of them having important value to the story. At first, it seems like the charms can be found through exploration and inquisitive interaction with the world. However, this is usually not the case. Many of the charms are given to the player through story progression, rather than anything really done on the player's own agency. And these charms are important because of the so-called turning points in the story. These are points where it presents the player with a sentence and an unfilled word. The player then gets to select from a preset of charms, if they've earned them that is. This really is what makes the game fun because of the game giving the player the choice on how to write the story. The narrator implies that this can have far-reaching implications, but it usually just means that it opens up a new branch, think alternative timeline. 
However, since you're limited to the charms you have, this means you'll need to return to these points at least one or two more times to fully explore all of the different paths. Originally, I thought this might mean wildly different branching paths, and I suppose an argument could be made for that with all the faux endings the game has. But in reality, the game uses these turning points to tell the story in bits and pieces and then build upon them in the next branching path. It's really clever and it's a fun mechanic especially when it gets silly, but overall it did fall a bit short from what I was expecting. Outside of this, as mentioned before, the game largely just consists of walking around and interacting with various things or talking to people. There are two other minigames, being a fishing minigame and a diner where you need to take orders. Both of these use the charms to complete them, so they'll be something you'll constantly return to if you so wish. And that brings us to the value and my final thoughts. But first, if you're enjoying the review or found it helpful, then please consider giving it a like as that helps me out greatly with the YouTube algorithm gods. Vegan Pines runs at 1999 USD and I put 6.5 hours into one playthrough. I was purposely exploring everywhere and trying to interact with everything because I was under the impression I needed to in order to get all the charms since they're tied to story progression. There was only one that I didn't end up getting until the end and was only used in a minigame. In that time, I managed to get 100% of the achievements as well. Beacon Pines had an entertaining story to play through, but it's just that, a good story. Once it's done, you've experienced just about everything the game has to offer. So with that, I'd suggest grabbing it on sale for most people. For those who want something more than only a solid narrative, then this probably isn't something for you. And those are my thoughts on Beacon Pines. If you played the game, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you haven't, then let me know if it sounds like something you'd be interested in, or if you have any other questions. I hope this video helped you in some small way, and if it did, then please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, or whatever it is you feel like doing. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.